This is part two, a continuation of the tutorial series on using 3D Slicer for doing uh, image analysis and segmentation of insects for looking at uh, trachea and respiratory structures. Um, I'm assuming that you have looked at video, the first video in this series uh, to, for importing data and also some system requirements. Um, and I'm also going to assume that you're somewhat familiar with Slicer and that you've uh, included in your setup um, all the modules that you see here. Um, I went over these in the, in the previous video for more details. So I'm also going to assume that you have um, a project ready to look at. Um, we have a Grillo Blada that I imported from the previous video that has... Uh, um, it's an ice crawler. These are really cool insects. They're very cold tolerant. They live um, high in the mountains, usually um, underneath the snowpack. They're kind of omnivorous. Um, we actually had one that we kept in the freezer in our office for a little while, and we'd feed it little bits of uh, uh, dead cockroach in it. It uh, lived in the fridge in a cold environment for, for a few years, actually. Uh, we named it Frosty. Anyway, so I'm going to take the project that I created earlier and just drag and drop it on top of Slicer. It will load in the scene file. And this is kind of where we left off from the last video. Now, one thing I'm going to say here really fast is that uh, for any kind of segmentation work, which is kind of what we're starting on in this video, um, I highly recommend getting a fully functional three button mouse. Um, trackpads are really not suitable for this kind of work. Uh, this is the mouse that I use. It has a true three button setup, um, including a scroll wheel. Um, and also it is a vertical mouse. It's ergonomic and it's wireless. Um, I have both wireless and wired versions. Um, I highly recommend getting some kind of ergonomic setup because you will be spending a, a lot of time in front of your computer um, doing all kinds of drawing. And I've at times I have used um, a Wacom tablet um, to do detailed work. Um, I highly recommend making sure that uh, you spend a lot of time thinking about your ergonomics and making sure that you don't uh, hurt yourself because it's actually really, really easy to do. Anyway, with that, um, so if we look at this scan, as we go through the slices here, you can turn on slice intersections here so you can see where things are as we go up and down through the volume. There is the insect and then it is inside of this vial, this Eppendorf tube that we scan the insect in. And we really don't want to look at all of this vial or the packing material and so on. And so we do an operation that I refer to as vial removal. Um, and to do that, I go to the side-by-side -side view in Slicer, and what I'm going to do is create a segment that I then use to mask off everything that I don't want. So I'll go to the segment editor, I'll add a new segment, I'll call it mask. I am a tiny bit red-green colorblind, so I tend to make things easy for me to see by changing the color here, like that. And then what I will do is I'm going to use the fill between slices feature of Slicer uh, to mask a number of these slices through the length of the insect and then I'll fill in between them and then use that as a mask to mask off everything else. So that was a kind of a lot of words to describe what I'm about to do, but you'll get the idea when I start looking at it. So I'll use paint and we're going to not use a sphere brush. We're just gonna use the standard flat brush here make it kind of as large as possible here not too large and I'm going to just start anywhere and I'm going to paint everything that I want to keep then I'm going to move to another spot up here I use the shift key and I move the mouse to sort of jump the slice to where I want it to be and I'll do the same thing here I'll zoom in and I'll paint here. And then I'll move up a little more. There's a little bit of judgment called for in how far apart each of these slices needs to be. You'll see in a moment why and how this works. Let me make this a little bit smaller. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing because it will take about 10 or 15 minutes to do the entire thing, which would undoubtedly put people to sleep. But you'll get the general idea here and then you can kind of apply it to your own scans. So I have a number of slices here. 
going the length of the insect. I'll do one more up top here just because you can kind of get the general idea and so that we can mask it and have something pretty to look at. One more up top here, scroll up top there, there. So now if I scroll through the entire volume here, you can see that there's a number of spots here where I've painted sort of a disc that, inca that incorporates everything in that slice that I want to be in my final good volume. And if I were to continue doing this, I would go all the way down here and include the legs and stuff like that. Now what I will do is go over to fill between slices. What this will do is it does an interpolation down the length of the volume, uh, depending on where you put the slices, and it will fill in between these. And it's kind of hard to explain unless you see it. So I will do initialize. It takes a few seconds to do it, or depending on how big your volume is, it can take a few minutes. And you can see here, it will fill in, it'll make a segment that will fill in all of these areas here. So it interpolates the slices that you did. Now, normally what I would do is I would go in and I would clean this up a little bit to make sure that it once run, when it runs through, it gets most of what I want. But for the sake of just demonstrating this, I'm gonna do it. So we hit apply. And then this makes a segment that I will then use as a mask. And it will mask off everything outside of this. So over here, I've got mask volume. Our input volume is the source volume. Our out, or, well actually we'll just say Gorilla Blada unmasked. Our output volume will create a new volume as Gorilla Blada masked. And we want to fill the outside with zero. And then we'll hit apply. And this has now masked off everything that we don't want to see. So if we go to the data module here, we've actually got two things. We've got unmasked and masked. So we'll turn off, we'll get rid of the masked one for now. Oh no, I don't want to rename it. I want to re delete it. So now we've just got the mask volume. And just to kind of verify that we can sort of see what we want to see or that it did what we wanted it to do, we will very quickly go to the volume renderer take a look at it because it's small we have to zoom in because if we work on insects and they're very small and ice crawlers are actually also pretty small and now if we tweak the transfer function a tiny bit there is the front half of our ice crawler now the reason we do this is because we don't want to deal with painting around the vial later on because the vial actually has a very similar density to the cuticle of the insect. And we're trying to paint the insect later on and differentiate it from the air on the inside. It's kind of cumbersome to deal with the vial. So this operation here, vial removal, also makes it easy to look at the outside of the insect, which is very useful for finding spiracles when we start doing our segmentation for looking at, at tracheal airways and stuff. So it's a little bit of a kind of pre-processing operation here, and then we get a nice clean volume that is just the insect that we can look at through volume rendering and do all kinds of stuff with. It sort of makes everything easier later on. So this covered the very first step that we do after importing, which is sort of masking off everything that we don't care about. Now, you can use fill between slices very carefully, you know, later on to do you know, more detailed uh, um, taking out the packing material and stuff like that. This is just sort of the demonstration of the technique that you can apply to your own scans.